Hello folks, this is Pastor Mike Hoggard coming to you from Watchman Studios with another Watchman video broadcast. I'm going to be pretty serious in this episode of the Watchman broadcast because of the particular subject that I will be dealing with today. Our study, of course, we started this last week dealing with false prophets. We read Matthew 24 and some other scriptures, ended up at Deuteronomy 13, where God said that if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises, shows you a sign or a wonder, and then it come to pass, so yes, these people, some of them, will have the ability to cause signs and wonders to come to pass. Paul called them signs and lying wonders. In other words, maybe the wonder wasn't so wonderful. Maybe it was just a trick of some kind. But the idea itself was it was meant to deceive people into believing something that wasn't true. And um, he told them, he said, now the key is the sign or the wonder come to pass. And then they say, let us go after other gods. Now, other gods, I think, could mean the one third of the angels kicked out of heaven. They are certainly gods, little g, devils and people are going to worship them. Or maybe possibly other gods, a reference to maybe another God violating the first commandment. The first commandment says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And it doesn't always have to be plural gods before God. It could be a singular God like Moloch. Yeah, people still worship Moloch with all the child sacrifices going on in this world. You can bet people still worship Moloch or Brahma, Shiva, Buddha, <clears throat> any of these other gods that people raise up. My question is, is it possible that people are worshiping humans in replacement of God? Well, what really drove the Japanese army and their warfare in World War II was the fact that they believed, they believed in their heart, mind, and soul that Emperor Hirohito was a living God. So much so that after America conquered and invaded Japan, took it over, and started dismantling all of their war machine, one of the conditions that they made upon the emperor was that he denounced himself. And I think this was something that he wanted to do anyway. He went on the radio and denounced himself as a living God. Now, they still love their emperor in Japan. They have respect for him. But he doesn't have the power over those people that he had back during World War II. They really worshipped this man as a god. And so is it possible that a person could be worshipped, bowed down to, and those people believe that either that man is God, 2 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians and Ezekiel uh, let's see, Ezekiel 28, I believe. <clears throat> uh, Second Thessalonians, we know that he is the man of sin and the son of perdition. That day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, man of sin, um, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's one witness where they're worshipping a man as if he were equal to or a replacement of God. Here's another one. Ezekiel 28, son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God, capital G here. I sit in the seat of God, again, capital G, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man and not God. So this Bible is filled with 
everything that we need to know about false prophets, how they work, what they're going to say, how they're going to deceive people, how to recognize and separate them from God's true ministers, preachers, evangelists, pastors, all over the world that are preaching that this Bible is the Word of God. It is, the Word is God, is what we believe. We believe that our final and only rule of faith and practice is the Word of God. If the Word of God says it, it is God saying it. If the Word of God doesn't say it, God didn't say it. It's that simple. And that's actually how God told it, the people in Ezekiel. Ezekiel 13, I think Ezekiel 22. He tells, these, he tells them that these prophets come along saying God has said, and God said, I never said that. So if God says that he never said it, and we don't find it in his word, then God didn't say it. It's just that simple. Now, before I be begin, I want to say to all the good people of Kenya, I've visited Kenya many times. I've been among the people. I've been in your houses. I've broke bread with you. I've labored among you. I've visited with you, preached to you, heard you preach. I remember my first day in Kenya. In 2011, after all that the devil did to try to dissuade us, to try to stop us, to discourage me, including the night there, the first night in Kenya, where I'm hearing the devil say to me, get out, leave, you're in danger, you don't belong here, leave, leave. I, that went on for hours. Then I go into Kibera, one of the world's largest slums. I have never seen anything like that in my life. And yet, I saw a neighborhood, a, a group of people, large group of people living together, buying things from one another, one man making things out of steel, one man making things out of wood, one man cooking chicken on a grill to sell to people, one lady making samosas. I love samosas making samosas on the roadside, people walking by, giving her a few shillings, buying one of those, eating them on their way. I saw a community. And then I went inside the churches. And I could tell the presence of God was there. So I want to say this to the, to the good people of Kenya and the good pastors of Kenya. I don't doubt your sincerity in the love that you have for God the love that you have for Jesus Christ. And to the many pastors, I don't doubt your sincerity in your love and respect for the Bible, which is God's holy word. And Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3.16 concerning what, what the Bible is for how we should regard it, whether or not all of the doctrines of God are actually in the Bible. So he, he commands Timothy, telling him, verse 15, that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. And then he says, all scripture, Genesis to Revelation is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. That way, if, if I say something and I want proof to you, and you don't agree with me, and I want to prove to you that what I said was true, I'm going to give you scripture verses. I'm going to read them to you and say, this is exactly what I just said, word for word. And hopefully, you'll say, you know, maybe, maybe you're right. For correction, so that if I'm wrong, and trust me, I've been wrong lots of times. If I'm wrong, then I read it in the Bible and I believe what the Bible says. 
then I have to throw out what I used to believe and start believing what the Bible said. That applies to you as well. All of us need correcting. All of us. We're men. We're humans. For instruction and righteousness. And then, that the man of God, listen to me, pastors, bishops, evangelists, the man of God may be perfect. How are we perfect? Through the scriptures. Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In other words, if God says it in his word, then we follow it. We believe it. We trust it. We place our soul on this book and say, I'm trusting my very eternal life with the words that are in this book. Okay? And then if the Bible doesn't say it, then I don't believe it. And I won't believe it because it's not in the scriptures. I mean, surely you men of God, we're not like the Catholics, are we? The Catholic priest who say, well, the Bible isn't perfect. And we have the Bible plus the Pope of Rome to tell us what to believe. Is that what Jesus said? What was the last thing that Jesus said in this Bible? In this Bible, the last book is the book of Revelation, right? God put it there last. In fact, it was the last one written. It was written somewhere around 90, AD, 94, 95, 96, give or take. But we know it was the last book written. God wanted it that way. He visited, Jesus visited John at a very old age. Okay? And, and here's the last thing that Jesus said to us. He said, verse 18 of chapter 22, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Do you want those plagues? I don't. Because that's the vials of God's wrath that he's going to pour out. There is, we know, that there is a very serious punishment to anybody who adds to the word of God, don't we? And then, verse 19, If any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. This is why I believe the King James is the word of God because the new translations and including possibly the, the latest Swahili version takes verses out, takes the name of Jesus out multiple times, took out 1 John 5, 7. Go look that verse up and see if it's in your Bible where it says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Look in the Swahili Bible for Daniel 3.25. Who was in the fiery furnace? Was it the Son of God? Moana wa Mungu? Or was it Moana wa Miungu? A son of the gods. Look in your Bible. Daniel 3.25. So we have a warning here. Last thing in the Word of God that tells us if somebody comes along after this and adds something, like the Mormons, they add a whole book. The Catholics, they add the words of the Pope. The Seventh-day Adventists, they add the teachings of Ellen White. to And they contradict what this book teaches. We reject those outright. You following with me? So again, I have no doubt that many of you men out there, bishops, pastors, preachers, evangelists, you have a reverence for the Word of God. You teach and preach the Word of God, and that's the way it is. Now, I've said all that to say this. I'm speaking primarily to the people of Kenya today. But this also applies 
to anybody else in the rest of the world. Trust me when I say we here in America, we've had our share of men who've risen up saying that they were the chosen prophet of God and God has words for them that only this prophet knows. Like Joseph Smith, who came up somehow with this whole Book of Mormon nonsense calling it another testament of Jesus Christ. Well, what did Paul say? And where did he get it from? An angel called Moroni showed him these golden plates buried at a hill in New York. And they were written in, what did he call it? Revised hieroglyphics. Something that nobody had ever seen before. He was the only one that knew how to translate it. He translated it out of it and then the golden plates disappeared. So an angel gives him another gospel, right? And what did Paul say? Though we or an angel from heaven bring you any other gospel, let him be a curse. Well, the whole book of Mormon's cursed and everybody that believes it is cursed. And we have several people follow our ministry come out of Mormonism, right? And then we have guys like Jim Jones. Remember him? He rose up, made himself equal with Jesus Christ because people bowed and worshiped him. They believed Jim Jones so much that over a thousand people followed him down to Guyana, a nation in South America, built a community, called it Jonestown, built an airstrip, and then he convinced almost 800 people, family members, men, women, children, to drink poison Kool-Aid and end their own lives. David Koresh, a branch of the Seventh-day Adventist cult called the Branch Davidians, refused to allow those people to leave that compound. There is a, a movie made that where they got eyewitness testimony both from the FBI negotiators, the FBI themselves, and some of the Branch Davidians that survived that fire. And I believe what they said. Those people had plenty of chances, plenty of opportunities to leave that compound. David Koresh wouldn't let them. And to them, David Koresh was equal. You know what David Koresh was doing? He was writing out what he thought the seven seals were all about. And he said, when I get this finished, then I will let everybody out. He never finished it. Now, did the FBI do wrong? Absolutely. But so did Koresh. He refused to let those people out. Some of them were begging him to leave. And he, because he told them, if you reject me, you've rejected God. Now, is that true? I mean, I've got people that have left my church over the years. You know what I've never said to them? If you walk out of Bethel, you're going to lose your salvation. How could I say that? How could I, as a man, say that? I can't. So, the person that I'm going to warn you about today is Dr. David O'War, a former genetic scientist turned prophet of God. Now, some of you probably know the story of Dr. O'War better than I do, so I won't bother telling you the story about how he rose up, how he fathered a child in Israel and abandoned the child and his mother. I don't understand that. But anyway, now he believes that God has called him to be a prophet. In fact, he said that God the Father himself has visited him. I'm going to deal with that. And here's how I'm going to do this. There's a lot of stories about Dr. O'War, a lot of rumors, a lot of things that have been written up in various newspapers, especially in Kenya, about Dr. O'War, both good and bad. But here's what I'm going to do, just to make it fair. I'm not going to rely on any rumors. I'm not going to rely upon 
what a newspaper said, because some newspaper, they don't get it right anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you things that Dr. Owar has said, guaranteed that he said. Then I'm going to compare it with the Word of God. And then we'll know, because if you believe this Bible <clears throat> is the inspired, inerrant Word of God, then we have a choice to make. And the Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. And I'm pointing at myself. I don't know everything that's right. I don't say everything right. But when I read this book and share with people the words of this book, this book is never wrong because the word was God. And I would do that with any a Pope. I would do that with David Koresh. I would do that with Joseph Smith. In fact, I think I have. Or with any person out there that I think would be a false prophet. I'm going to do the same thing with Dr. David O'War. And then you'll have a choice to make. You'll either believe Dr. O'War or you'll believe the Word of God. But you're going to find out that you can't believe that both are true because they contradict one another. Let's start Matthew chapter 24. This is uh, what we've been dealing with. We're doing a study in Matthew 24. Here's what Jesus said. Matthew 24 verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So Jesus warned in the last days, and I believe that we're getting to the last days. I know that Dr. O'War preaches that we're in the last days. So let's just say that we're in the last days. And Jesus said, many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. A lot of people. Now, the Bible also tells us the type of people that get deceived. In Second Peter and in Jude, parallel passages, they talk about the false prophets, telling us that they, uh, their eyes are full of adultery and they cannot cease from sin. The Bible calls them natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, which means that they are so messed up in their mind by their false doctrine and what it brings to them that they have no possibility of change. Now, I'm not just going to say, well, I don't believe some of the doctrine that it believes because I've read the faith statement that's on Dr. O'War's website. And I'll tell you, I didn't find anything wrong with his faith statement. What I find wrong are the claims that he has made, not about God, not about Jesus, but about himself. See, if you listen to Dr. O'War, and I mean really listen to him, pay attention to him, you know what you're going to hear? That it's all about him. Him. He's, what does he call himself? The mightiest prophet. There's no humility in this man. None. That's one requirement of God's men is humility. Okay. In fact, I'm going to show you that he sees himself and he doesn't have a problem with seeing himself equal with God. Now, Deuteronomy 18 is the passage, primary passage we're going to look at today. Deuteronomy 18, because God actually tells us here about a prophet who's going to arise. 
And we know this prophet is Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy 18, verse 15. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet. Now notice the Bible has that in a capital letter. What does that, what does that denote? Deity, right? Several places where the word judge, in fact, I think four times, the word judge, capital J, that denotes Christ, deity. Uh, the creator, capital C, okay? That denotes that he is deity as, as the creator. God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, meaning that he's going to be a Jew, of thy brethren, so he makes it very clear, like unto me, and Moses is referring to himself here, unto him ye shall hearken, according to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. Verse 18, I will raise them up a prophet, again, capital P, from among their brethren, the Israelites, like unto thee, Moses, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that, listen to this now, whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Now, there's several things that we're going to break down here before we move on. Number one, uh, the requirement, the, the person they were looking for, God didn't say he was going to be a Gentile, said he was going to be a Jew, he's going to be of thy people, of thy brethren, the Israelites. That God would make him similar in fashion to Moses, and which is true, Christ came down from heaven, like Moses coming down from Mount Sinai. He came bringing the word of God, the commandment of God in his hand, which was the new covenant. God put his words into the mouth of Jesus Christ. And he came to lead his people to righteousness and to salvation. Now, God made a particular warning here. And he said, you need to listen to what this guy has to say, this prophet. Because if you don't, there's going to be a punishment to you. And then he said, if somebody else comes pretending to be Jesus, the capital P prophet that God was going to send, and presumes to speak a word in the name of God, that God didn't say, and again, how will we know whether or not the prophet said something that God said or didn't say? It would be in the book. It would be in the Bible. So if a prophet comes along and he says, God has told me to say this to you, and he says it and you're going, well, that's not in the Bible anywhere then that prophet has done two things wrong. Number one, he's spoken presumptuously and God never said it. Number two, he added to the words after the book of Revelation. He added to the word of God. God also said that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. In other words, you have to stand before God and give an account of whether or not you hearkened unto the words of this book. Because we all agreed at the beginning of this video that this book was the word of the Lord. And we saw in Revelation that after John wrote Revelation, no more new words were to be added to this book and a strong warning because God said if you add to the words of this book I'll add to you the plagues that are written in here so adding to the word if I were to come to you and say God gave me something last night God told me to say this to you 
you're not supposed to believe because if I don't say it, if I don't say it from the Bible, you're not supposed to believe a word I say. Now, one of the things that I know about Dr. Owar, it was on his website several years ago. And maybe he still claims this. He told everybody that he was the prophet mentioned in Deuteronomy 18. He told everybody that, which would mean that if you don't listen to what Dr. David O'War says, God's going to require it of you, which caused, and here's, so I was going to say this earlier and I didn't. One of the things that I know about the people who will follow David O'War to their death is that the Bible calls them unstable souls because that's what Second Peter chapter 2 says. It says that these false prophets will beguile unstable souls. Unstable means you're not fixed on the Word of God. You're not established on the solid rock of the Word of God and you just float around and whatever Dr. O'War says you believe no matter how outrageous and no matter how unbiblical. So to those people, you're probably going to listen to me and you're probably going to hate my guts. And you're not going to believe a word I say because I'm speaking against your prophet. But to those of you guys and ladies who have a high regard for the word of God, you were told that David O'War is a man of God. You've listened to some of his sermons. Some of the things he says might sound good. But the truth of it is, with what I'm going to show you today, you're going to make a choice. You're either going to say, I'm still going to follow Dr. O'War no matter what, or, as some have already done in Kenya, I'm not going to listen to that man anymore. I'm just going to stick with the Word of God. So, to those of you who are ready to listen, think about what he just said. Dr. O'War claims that he is that prophet spoken of in Deuteronomy 18. Now, again, if that's true, then we all have to listen to everything he says to do or we can't go to heaven. Okay? However, it hit by his very nature, it violates the scripture. David O'War did go to Israel to study. He did father a child in Israel by a Jewish woman and abandoned them both. But he's not Jewish. He's not an Israelite. He's not from one of the tribes of Israel. So number one, he can't be the prophet spoken of here. Number two, and this is the most important one. We're going to see from Scripture that the prophet that Moses was speaking of is clearly Jesus Christ. And yet Dr. O'War says that Deuteronomy 18, that that prophet prophesied about is Dr. O'War. Now, both of those cannot be true. It cannot be both Dr. O'War and Jesus Christ. One of them has to be lying. And if Dr. O'War is lying, and Jesus Christ is the prophet spoken of in Deuteronomy 18, then that means that Dr. O'War puts himself equal with Jesus Christ. John 6, 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle that Jesus did, said, This is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. Now, they're referring to Deuteronomy 18. 
and what Moses, because these men were Jewish, they knew Moses, they knew what he said, they knew that Moses had prophesied of a great prophet, capital P, that was coming to them. And when they saw the miracle that Jesus did, they said, that's Deuteronomy 18. That's what Moses said, that he's the prophet that Moses said was coming to us. And they got happy about it. Now that's one witness. We have a second witness. John chapter 7, verse 40. Many of the people, therefore, when they heard this saying, said, of a truth, this is, and notice the writing, the prophet, capital P. Now, in English, the phrase, the prophet, means that there's only one of them. It didn't say, of a truth, this is one of those prophets. Didn't say that. It said, of a truth, this is the prophet. And it capitalized the P there, matching what we saw in Deuteronomy 18. So again, if what Dr. Awar said was true, that he is the prophet, Deuteronomy 18, then what was said about Jesus is a lie. And it was said about Jesus in the Word of God. And you don't believe there's a lie in the Bible, do you? No. It can't be. Can't. In fact, Deuteronomy 18 tells us how to spot a false prophet. If what he said, what he prophesied, didn't come to pass just one time, if it's wrong one time, or the prophet is wrong one time, then we don't have to listen to him. And it's true of the Bible. If the Bible's wrong one time, we don't have to listen to it. That's the devil's plan, by the way, is to try to make the Bible wrong one time. Because by God's own rules, we don't have to listen to it. We don't have to listen to anything that's in the Bible. So again, we have Dr. O'War saying that he's the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. But then we have the testimony in the Gospel of John, the Word of God saying that Jesus is the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. Both of them cannot be true. One of them is a lie. And if what Dr. O'War said is a lie, then God told us in Deuteronomy 18 that that prophet's going to be put to death by God, not, not by you, by God. Vengeance belongs to God, saith the Lord. God will take care of him. And if Dr. Awar truly claims that he's the prophet of Deuteronomy 18, that makes him equal with Jesus Christ. Now that's just the first thing that I'm going to show you. Now, what, I, what else I'm going to show you in the things that Dr. Awar has done and said it is going to be very clear that Dr. O'War sees himself as being equal with God, with Jesus Christ. And that's not true. Again, it's not that I have a problem with his doctrine. I have many friends in the ministry that I don't see eye to eye. I don't agree with everything they believe and they don't agree with everything I believe. But I don't call them out. I don't call them false prophets, false teachers. We all see through a glass darkly. But some things are just obvious. And the things that I'm going to show you today are just very obvious blasphemies against God and against Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of Dr. O'War. Take a look at it. This is Dr. O'War. I don't know if that's his home. You have one, two, three, four men and one woman bowing down before him. And the caption on the picture is, and I didn't write this, somebody else did, worshiping the mightiest prophet of war.
from Kenya. Now, these men are, and women are bowing down to him, and Dr. Awar is receiving their honor. Does that sound right to you? That a normal man who fathered a child out of wedlock and abandoned the child and son up in Israel, that a normal man could be bowed down to you? To, to, does, does that sound right to you? The Apostle John in the book of Revelation, so overwhelmed with what he was given by the angel and shown by the angel, that he fell down and worshipped the angel. Do you know what the angel... Now, angels are higher than us, right? Do you know what the angel did? Revelation 19, 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Not even an angel would allow a human to bow down to him. The angel's like saying, get up, You're, we're both going to get in trouble. You're supposed to only worship God. I'm just no different than you. For I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. I'm not anything special. Don't worship me. Worship God. So take a look at this picture again. It looks like he's making himself equal with God being worshipped by these four men and this woman and receiving the worship and the praise that they're given him here's what God said about that Isaiah 42 8 I am the Lord that is my name and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Take a look at that picture again. They're worshiping Dr. O'War as you would worship a god. And God said, I'm a jealous God. Did he not say that? Are there not consequences to those who bow down to any man? They bowed to Jim Jones. They obeyed David Koresh even to the point of letting themselves burn up in that horrible fire. People have served and bowed down to men for years. Usually they were slaves. But bowing down and worshiping men, that's forbidden in the scriptures. God saying, my glory will I not give to another. God, now, oh, let me show you this. It's one of my favorite passages in the whole Bible. It's in the book of John. Uh, chapter 17, because this is Jesus praying to God and he calls him Holy Father, right? Now, is it wrong for the Catholic Pope to be called Holy Father? Is that wrong? Of course it is. That title only belongs to God. So no man should bow before the Pope, should they? No. Likewise, no man should bow before Dr. O'War. Jesus said, verse 5 of chapter 17, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Jesus can share God's glory, and God's not upset with that, because God glorified his only begotten son. But he didn't glorify Dr. O'War, because he's just a sinful man. And here's Dr. O'War receiving praise from men. And oh, by the way, where he said here in Isaiah 40, 42, 8, I am the Lord, that is my name. Hold on to that. Because we're going to use that verse 
again in just a little bit. Now, this is from Dr. O'War's own website. And it changes over time. They add more things to it and so on. What I told you about uh, Dr. O'War claiming that he's the prophet from Deuteronomy 18 came from his website a couple of years ago. I saw it there. I didn't happen to get a screenshot of it, but it was there. And those of you who've listened to him over the years, you know that what I'm telling you is true. He's claimed that he's the prophet of Deuteronomy 18. But he's not. Jesus is. And they can't be both true. Now, take a look at his website here. Oh, he's got prophecy news at the top. He's got like his vision of the two rings that he saw in heaven. Then he's got December 22, 2019 in Kusumu, uh, Mega Word Expo, dreadful prophecy fulfilled, the huge cloud of God bigger than the city descended over the lake and approached the venue of the conference. And I kind of have a problem with that. But look just below that, and I have an arrow pointing to it. God, the Holy Spirit, descended on him like he did Messiah. I have a big problem with that. Isaiah 11. When the Holy Ghost descended from heaven and fell upon Jesus, rested on his shoulder, what happened next? The voice of God came from heaven and said what? This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. You see what I'm getting at? Dr. O'War claims that the Holy Ghost, and by the way, most of his pictures are photoshopped. You know that, don't you? God the Holy Spirit descended on him like he did Messiah. So am I correct when I tell you that Dr. O'War claims of himself that he is equal with Jesus Christ when his own website says the exact same thing. Isaiah chapter 11, there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Jesse was David's father. We know that Christ came from David of the tribe of Judah. Did Dr. O'War? No, he just fathered a child out of wedlock in Israel. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's what happened when Jesus came up out of the water. The Spirit of the Lord rested upon him on his shoulder like a dove. And God said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. It's called guilt by association. Now, normally we would apply that like if you're in a car uh, with f four people in it and the other three people all have drugs in their pocket and they get the police pull them over, you're going to jail. Even though you don't have any drugs, you're, guilt by you're guilty by association, you're going to jail okay, for drugs. Now, you might get off, but you're still going to jail guilt by association. But in this case, Dr. O'War is guilty because he is associating himself, making himself equal with Jesus Christ. Like he said in his own website, God the Holy Spirit descended on him like he did Messiah. Excuse me, Dr. O'War is a thousand miles, a million miles away from being the Messiah. He's not, he's, he's as close as I am which is not even close. I told you, he presents himself as being equal 
with God. And no man is. The rest of the website, the dreadful cloud of God descending upon Moses, the fierce friend of God. You see, now he's calling himself Moses. Later on, we're going to see that he calls himself something far worse. Then, of course, the claim that he raised a woman from the dead. I don't believe it. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. I believe this woman was sick. And then he drug her around, poor thing, for like two or three years, showing her at every one of his conferences that he had, saying, this is a woman I raised from the dead. And then she died. 2 Corinthians 11. If Owar claims that the Holy Ghost as a dove descended on prophet Owar as he did with Jesus, that makes Dr. Owar another Jesus. Paul said this, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me. For I'm jealous over you with a godly jealousy. For I've espoused you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Now let me stop right here. If you are a true born again Christian, then we have been espoused, engaged, to be married to one husband, Jesus Christ. Or would you believe that God espouses us to be married to Dr. O'War and Jesus Christ, or just Dr. O'War. If he makes himself equal with Christ, would that not mean two husbands? But he said one husband, Jesus Christ only. But then he said, but I fear, verse 3, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. And again, some of you who hear what I'm saying are actually going to hear what I say. You're going to listen to the word of God and you're going to say, I'm not following Dr. O'War ever again. He's a false prophet. He makes himself equal with God. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be guilty of that. But the rest of you are going to be fooled for whatever motivation. Maybe you think that you're going to receive blessings from Dr. O'War, or maybe you're afraid to turn away from him because he's warned people that if you turn away from him, you're not going to heaven. I'll show it to you. Or maybe you're a fearful of the people that are associated with him because like I said he's a very powerful man he's linked himself in with I don't remember if it's the president or prime minister of Kenya he's linked himself in with highly placed politicians he has a huge following he has been referred to as Kenya's prophet of God and I believe that he can be very dangerous. You see, he's already tried to get us cut off the air. And God wouldn't allow it to happen. And many people in Kenya fear that man. They're afraid to go against him. Afraid of reprisal. So... But Paul said, I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Some of you, your mind has already been corrupted, and you're not going to listen to a word I say. And you're not going to listen to the word of God either. That's more important. And when you don't listen to the word of God, you stand to receive the wrath of God. Then he said in verse 4, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. 
Show me any of the apostles in the Bible that the Holy Ghost came and descended in visible form as a dove on them. Show me any of the prophets in the Old Testament where likewise the Holy Ghost descended as a dove in physical form on them. Show me any of the prophets or the apostles in the Bible, any of the men where God said to them, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. Show me that. Never happened. It only happened to one person, Jesus Christ. And for Dr. O'War to also say that it happened to him, he is making himself equal with Jesus. And Paul said, some of you in, in your folly are going to follow after another Jesus. And if it's another Jesus, guess what else it is? It's another gospel. And I'm going to show it to you. Now, this also from Dr. O'War's website. Take a look. Notice that there, and I have an arrow pointing to it, and then I've enhanced it. There's a picture here. This is photoshopped. This is photoshopped. This didn't actually happen. Nobody in Helsinki, Fentland reported that Dr. O'War had this happen to him while they were there. It's photoshopped. But look at the claim. Mightiest prophet of the Lord transfigured June 18, 2017. That's blasphemy. Again, show me any of the prophets of the Lord beside Moses. We know that Moses was in the presence of God getting the commandments that had been transfigured. Show me, and then that, that eventually died away. Show me any of the apostles of the New Testament. Likewise. Or they were transfigured like Jesus. None of them. So here he's, again, he's making himself equal. Let's look in uh, Matthew chapter 17. And I want to show you something in this chapter. Where Peter and James and John were wrong about something they wanted to do. And, and God corrected them. After six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up to an high mountain apart. And he, Jesus, was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. That's what Dr. O'War is claiming. And then, behold, there appeared unto him Moses and Elias talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, one for Elias. They was going to end up worshiping Moses and Elijah. Now, get ready for this. You remember a while ago when the Holy Ghost lit on Jesus' shoulder as a dove and God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased, hear ye him. Dr. O'War, then that's the claim that he is the mighty prophet of God and you have to listen to him. As soon as Peter said this, here's what happened. While he yet spake, verse 5, Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Dr. O'War now, on two occasions, is making himself equal with God. Why do you think he put it on his website that number one, the Holy Ghost landed on him. And when the Holy Ghost descended on Jesus, God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And then Jesus transfigured. God does the same thing. Dr. O'War transfigured. God saying the same thing. That man wants you to think that he's equal with Jesus Christ. And besides, I mean, think about it. Who do you know that's been transfigured? Who else do you know? What preacher? What prophet? Who, who else do you know where the Holy Ghost lit on him like a dove? You see what he's doing? He is making himself equal 
with or a replacement of or another God before God. Total blasphemy. By the way, look next to that. These pictures here, they're kind of small. Where O'War is preaching and the pillar of cloud shows up, that's photoshopped. That's not real. That never happened. It gets worse. Here is an article written about a claim, a claim that Dr. O'War made recently. The article, the headline is, I went to heaven and anointed Jesus' seat. Prophet O'War. The article says, O'War refers to himself as the two biblical prophets, Moses and Elijah. He further claims to have toured heaven where he held fruitful discussions with God and his son, Jesus Christ. Stop right here. Didn't Jesus say, no man hath seen God at any time? Didn't Jesus say that? Didn't Moses want to see God and God refused? Said Moses, you, you won't be able to, you'll not live through it. Remember when Manoah and his wife saw the angel of the Lord? They had feared that they had seen God and they said, no man, you can't see God and live. We're going to die. But the Bible, Jesus clearly telling us, no man, no man hath seen God. No man. Dr. O'War says he has. He said that he had a conversation with God and with Jesus, but it gets worse than that. Said O'War in May 2018, The Lord Jehovah, the tremendous God of heaven, lifted me into heaven and took me to his throne. While I was there, there was tremendous glory, a lot of glory. Then the Lamb came, the Messiah came, then God the Father extended a bottle of oil to my right hand. Then I went down on my knees and I anointed the seat of the Messiah. Two types of people listening to me right now. Those who hear that and say, that's blasphemy. That man's a false prophet for sure. And then those who say, how dare you speak against the Lord's mightiest prophet. And to those who say that, I say in love. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life. Search the scriptures to see whether or not Jesus is telling the truth, the Bible is telling the truth, or Dr. O'War is telling the truth. That's all I'm asking you to do is search the scriptures. Yes, O'War anointed the seed of the Messiah. There are those who believe a war. The highly trained scientist, bachelor, and father of a son he left in Israel is a zealot who operates a cultish outfit, but not his followers. They sweep and wash roads with soap in readiness for his triumphant arrival to crusades. Some left salaried jobs for his ministry. Some people left their families to follow this man around. That's wicked. And yes, yes, there are pictures on the internet. People get out in the road with soap, water, and brush brooms and brush and soap and clean the streets so that Dr. O'War, when he comes in riding in his fancy car, that people have prepared the way for him. Did you hear what I just said? John the Baptist came to prepare the way for the Messiah. And these people washed the streets to prepare the way for a war. That's blasphemy. 
Now, could it be possible that Dr. O'War did visit heaven and that he anointed the seat of Jesus Christ, his throne? Nah. Luke 4.18 Who is it that anointed and gave authority to Christ and his throne? the Spirit of the Lord. Luke 4.18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Acts 4.24, And when they had heard that, they lifted up their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, Thou art God, which hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that in them is who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed. And he's talking about God. Only God can anoint Christ and his seat. Only God. Yet again, Dr. O'War making himself equal with God and his son Jesus Christ. Absolute blasphemy. Watch this one. This is from Dr. O'War's website, The Radiant Face of Moses. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai with the two tablets of the covenant law in his hands, he was not aware that his face was radiant because he had spoken with the Lord. Notice this picture, The Radiant Face of Moses. Again, photoshopped, a purposely altered image. This never really happened, ever. And yet Dr. O'War claims that it did. Now watch this, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Once again, O'War making himself equal with the Lord. Because the face of Moses being radiant was a foreshadowing of Christ in Matthew 17. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 13, And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. Let me stop right here. If you believe that really happened, what happened to all the people that, that was at that meeting? Did they have to turn away? Did they all leave the meeting telling everybody, His face was lit up so bright we couldn't even look at him. Did anybody see it? No. He made it up. Verse 14, But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Stop right here. You see, the two people that we know of that had their face lightened also helped write the Bible. You see what I'm getting at? He's making himself equal with both Moses and Jesus Christ. That must mean that what he says is equal to the words in this book. Just like the Pope. And you don't follow the Pope, do you? You don't worship him, do you? And the Pope has never claimed the stuff that Dr. O'War has claimed. Never. Now, verse 15. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. He did it again. Puts a picture on his website. Has it altered to make it look like his face is radiant because he's been in the presence of the Lord. And yet the Bible says 
That's the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord. Jesus Christ. He's making himself equal with Christ. Now, here's another one. This is from a Dr. O'Ware website in Australia. In an interview, Dr. O'Ware described his early encounters with the Lord that revealed his calling. In 2003, while staying in Chicago, I was in bed sleeping one night when the Lord presented himself in a vision, accompanied by Daniel, Elijah, and Moses as witnesses. I mean, after all, you got to have some big shots come along to make the story even better, right? And he said Moses, Elijah, and Daniel were there as witnesses. But who talks to Moses, Elijah, and Daniel to verify? In fact, here's what I want you to do. I want you to read Moses, Genesis through Deuteronomy. I want you to read everything that Elijah said. And I want you to read the book of Daniel. And see if you find Dr. O'War in there anywhere. You won't find him. Um, he touched me with his left hand and lifted me up, and I did not understand what he meant. And he told me, I want you to be my hand on earth. That's blasphemy. I don't have time to get into it. He showed me a highway to drive, showed me a throne, and inside there was the Ark of the New Covenant, he narrates. That's a lie. That's a lie. According to Dr. O'War, God... God appeared to Dr. O'War. Again, no man has seen God at any time. No man. No man can see God and live, the Bible says. So he didn't see God. But his claim is that God showed him a highway to drive and a throne, and inside the throne, the Ark of the New Covenant. He specifically said the Ark of the New Covenant. Now, had he said the Ark of the Old Covenant, I might say, well, it could be it's somewhere. We don't know where the Ark of the Old Covenant is. We, it's gone. It's missing. We don't know where it is. But we sure as the gospel know where the Ark of the New Covenant is, don't we? Revelation eleven nineteen, And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the Ark of his Testament. So Dr. O'War claims that God showed him a throne in the Ark of the New Covenant underneath that throne. But John saw in Revelation 11 that it wasn't tucked under some throne somewhere. It was there in the temple in heaven. So who are you going to believe? John, the Bible... Or Dr. O'War? Who are you going to believe? Back to his website. This is from a few years ago. It says, Happening right now in Italy, Mighty Conference in Reggio Emilia, February 28, 2015. The Messiah was now with defect. These, this is the words of Dr. O'War. This is what he said about Jesus, the Messiah. The Messiah was now with defect from the nail pierce and hence could not qualify to be a perfect lamb without defect as was the law. I couldn't believe that when I read that. That is an outright blasphemous lie. It is what the Bible says, it is what Peter said, a damnable heresy. Second Peter chapter 2. A damnable heresy. To say that Jesus was spotted and not qualified to be the Lamb of God. First Peter 1 verse 18. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed from corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ 
as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. This book says he was without blemish and without spot. Dr. Awar, the liar, says that Jesus became disqualified from being the lamb when he was pierced with the nail. He's lying through his teeth. So the challenge is to you who maybe still regard the word of God. Let God be true, every man a liar. Are you going to believe what Dr. O'War said? Or are you going to believe what the Bible says? But they can't both be true. Dr. O'War says Jesus disqualified as being the, the spotless lamb. Peter, speaking through the Holy Ghost, said he's the only spotless lamb without blemish. They can't both be true. Then, I'm going to play this video for you. This video is Dr. O'War in some conference somewhere, probably in Kenya, walking through the crowd with his microphone. He gets ticked off when some guy kind of grabs the microphone, chews him out a little bit. That's no big deal. But then he says that God called him, who he always refers to himself as the mightiest prophet, does he not? You hear him say it all the time. He talks about himself in the third person. The mightiest prophet, the mightiest prophet. Well, that's him. You remember the verse that we saw a while ago where God said, I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another? Well, Dr. O'War claims that he saw God and God called Dr. O'War my Lord. I'm not making this up. I'm going to play the video for you. I wanted you to meet him. Thank you for carrying Musichoke. 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 I tell you. I wanted you to meet the mighty prophet of the Lord. And when the Lord comes to speak with him, when the Lord comes to speak with him, the Father, Baba, in the dream, when he comes to him, he always calls him, he calls him, my Lord, my Lord, look what they have done. Upuzi kando. Upuzi kando. Upuzi kando. Did you hear what I told you today? Je ulisikia kile nilikwambia leo? Did you understand? Je ulielewa? Okay. Sawa. And then he comes and he stands and looks at him from a distance. Alafu anakuja na anasimama na muangalia kwa umbali. Then he says, Kisha anasema, This is the most powerful prophet that I have ever sent. Today I have told you. Blasphemy. God said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. His name is the Lord. You see it all through the King James Bible. And yes, that's translated correctly because all in the New Testament, when they're quoting the Old Testament verses where God's name, yod heh vah called the Tetragrammaton, 
what we say is Jehovah. In the Hebrew, every time the King James translator saw that, they wrote Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. In the New Testament, when it quotes those verses, uses the Greek word Kyrios, which means Lord. So this Bible is right. God's name is the Lord. Dr. O'War said that God calls Dr. O'War, the mightiest prophet, my Lord. Now he's not just equal to God. He's above God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Zechariah 14, 9, And the Lord shall be king over all the earth, and that day shall there be one Lord, and his name one. 1 Corinthians 8, 6, But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are, are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. Ephesians 4, 5, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Now, Jesus told us, call no man father, right? So all those Catholic priests, they're what? Father John, Father Tom, Father Philip, Father Nathaniel. They're not father. The Pope is not the Holy Father for sure, right? So we would never do that. We have one Lord, one Lord only. The Bible specifically says it's Jesus Christ. So why then would God contradict his own word by calling Dr. O'War my Lord? Either the Bible's true or Dr. O'War's true, but they can't both be true. And his website says that he believes the Bible's the inspired inerrant word of God. And yet, he has contradicted the Bible multiple times. Multiple times. Now, as I finish this up, let me ask you this. How do we go to heaven? By trusting in Jesus and his blood and his redemption. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Correct? Does Dr. O'War have a say in who goes to heaven and who doesn't? So let me go back to the Catholic Church. The priests of the Catholic Church and all the bishops and the Pope say that you cannot go to heaven unless you, are, you follow the teachings of the Roman Church. You cannot go to heaven unless you're baptized by them, given the Eucharist by them, uh, you confess to the priest, you cannot go to heaven unless you do what the priest tells you to do. That they say that they have a say in whether or not you go to heaven or not. Is that true? No, of course not. It's blasphemy. So does Dr. O'War have a say in who goes to heaven? Here he is, 30 second video, saying you will never enter heaven without him. Take a look. Big confusion in the church. God is never irrelevant. He cannot send me and then you say, no, me I will enter without him. Did you understand that part? Yes. Now this is a very critical part. Exactly. Meaning you can never ever ignore the prophet of the Lord. Exactly. Did you understand me? Exactly. So you cannot say, no, let me, I want to go to him direct. He's made himself, what's this now, seven, eight illustrations that I've given you where Dr. O'War makes himself equal with God saying, you cannot go to heaven unless he he says so. You know, usually the sign of any cult is that they will say to their followers, you cannot go to heaven 
if you leave our cult. That's one of the signs of any cult. That if you leave the cult, you leave the compound, that you've lost your salvation. That's what David Koresh told those people. If you leave this compound, then you've lost your salvation. You will not, you will not be part of, of God's kingdom. And so they let themselves burn alive in that compound. Jim Jones, same way, told those people, if you leave me and my teachings, then you cannot go to heaven. And yet the simplicity in Christ says, if you trust in the Lord and trust his word, you have salvation. You don't need some man telling you what to do, what to think. You don't need, I mean, we have churches, yes, but we're all in agreement that our salvation is of Jesus Christ. If people leave my church and go to another church, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're lost. John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Romans 5, 21, that is, sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by who? Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through who? Jesus Christ our Lord. I got three witnesses here, and there's a bunch more in the Bible that say salvation is of, by, and through Jesus Christ only. But Dr. O'War says he has to say you can go to heaven. You, you have to get his approval. You can't go to heaven unless he says so. These two are contradictory statements. They can't both be true at the same time. One of them is lying. Which one? Hebrews, and, and here's my, my big question. Why do we need Dr. O'War? Why do we need the mightiest prophet? Do we need him? Do we even need him? If he just comes and says what the Bible says, I don't have a problem with him. But he's spoken way out of the Bible, contradicting major issues in the Word of God, making himself equal with Jesus Christ. Do we even need prophets now? Mm -mm. Let me show you this, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. According to Hebrews 1, we have all, all the prophets that God wanted us to have. We have, to have all the Old Testament, and now we have God's only begotten Son to speak to us. Do we need anything else? Is not this word sufficient for everything that we need? Did not Paul say all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect and truly furnished unto all good works. Did not that tell us that our Bible is sufficient, that we have no need of anything else, including Dr. O'War? Deuteronomy 18, 21, back to that. If thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet has spoken it presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. How many times has he been wrong? Oh, sure, he's made claims that he predicted um, the Ebola outbreak, that he predicted COVID, that he... But nobody heard him say it before COVID showed up. How many times has he been wrong? If he's only been wrong once, he's not the prophet of God. 
And I submit to you, when you make yourself equal with Jesus Christ by claiming that you were transfigured in Helsinki, Finland, in front of everybody, and yet no one remembers it who was there, you lied. And nobody has to listen to you ever again. Again, I love the people of Kenya. I love you with all my heart. You are a beautiful people. And when you gather together and the Spirit of the Lord is there and you worship the Lord, I've never, I've never seen people worship with all their heart like I have the people of Kenya. I love you. I can't wait for this stupid COVID virus to break so that we can come back and minister among you once again. And I know, I knew that by making this video and playing it on uh, Watchman FM and Samburu and Eka Yokan Radio in Turkana, that it would more than likely create a lot of trouble for our ministry. We're even in fear for our very lives now. Because I believe Dr. Awar has henchmen, thugs, people that will go out try to cause trouble for those who speak against him. And see, here's the thing. Those of you who are ticked off, you're mad at me because I spoke against him. If he's really God's man, won't God enact vengeance on me? Vengeance belongeth to God. You don't have to act on it. You don't have to do anything. If Dr. O'War is really God's man, God will destroy me. But if he's not, if he's a false prophet, and I know he is, and I don't warn you about him, then God's going to get me, for sure. And I don't want to be in trouble with God. So I'm saying these things to you because I love you. And I'm like David in Psalm 119. I hate every false way because false prophets do nothing but put people in bondage to them. How much money, how much money do you think he has? He's a millionaire. He lives better than 98% of the people that follow him. Way better. And while his followers starve to death, he has people bowing before him. And him with millions of dollars. Which one are you going to believe? You're going to believe God's word? I've made it clear to you that what he said contradicts God's word. They can't both be true. Now you have to choose which one you're going to believe. I do this because I love you. You are the reason why I do what I do. And I want you to pray about these and ask God to show you in the scriptures whether Dr. O'War is a true prophet or a false prophet. And if you'll do that, I promise you, God will show you. This is Pastor Mike. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.